I'm John Filardo, Vice President of Government Relations of the American Chiropractic Association. Here with our longtime lobbyist and counsel, Rick Miller, in Washington, D.C., down at the Lincoln Memorial, talking to you about health care reform. Rick, uh, we had another uh, large step in the process take place yesterday with the reporting of the health care reform bill in the Senate Finance Committee. Chairman Baucus had a 14-9 uh, to 9 vote, one Republican on board, Olympia Snow from Maine. Let's talk a little bit about that today. Sure, John. Last week, for those viewers who saw our update, we speculated about what would happen in this week's vote in front of the Senate Finance Committee. And I think we predicted that uh, although there was some doubt as to the outcome, that in the end, uh, Chairman Baucus would have the votes he needed to get that out of committee. That's exactly what happened. He was able to convince all the Democrats uh, to go along with him, at least for this particular vote, to move the process forward. And as you noted, an important vote from Senator Snow, the lone Republican that voted for the bill, simply to move this process forward. And that's what it was all about, Rick. I think no one really on that committee, maybe outside of, of Chairman Baucus may, and maybe a couple others, uh, were really excited about what was in that bill. Of course, you had uh, uh, the liberal wing of the party who sit on that committee. Chuck Schumer, for one, uh, did not like the, uh, the absence of a public plan in this bill. Uh, they voted uh, to, to move the process right. forward. It was exactly. all about process, and it's all about process at, at this point. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, where they go from here. Sure. They have to uh, take their bill now and, like we've been saying for many weeks, meld this together with the health uh, committee bill that passed theirs back in July. That process could take uh, several weeks, just to that, that process alone. John, I think we might have mentioned this on a previous episode as well. That process of, of melding those two bills together, in reality, has been going on behind closed doors for some time now. Uh, this vote out of the committee makes it official, so they're officially beginning that process. But you and I both know we've had it on good authority. We know some of the staff people involved. Work's been going on to try and put the, these two bills together for some time. A couple of weeks uh, mm -hmm. at the very least. Yeah, and like you said, it's going to be behind closed doors. Absolutely. I'm hearing uh, maybe three senators in the room. Uh, you have Baucus, uh, Dodd, who helped shepherd this bill through the Health Committee back uh, earlier in the summer, and of course, uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Uh, it's going to be a very small room. Absolutely, John. And the next step, uh, the likely next step, uh, once this melding process is completed, uh, maybe by the end of the month, uh, Senate Majority Leader Reid will bring the bill to the floor. And he'll do that, I believe. Uh, the parliamentary situation will be such that he'll do that through what's called a motion to proceed. Uh, theoretically, he'll need 60 votes for that motion. I think he would have the 60 votes. That bill would be brought to the floor. And then they would start what I believe is going to be a long and drawn out process of amending the bill. Uh, all sorts of uh, floor fights, if you will. Uh, sorting out some of the more contentious issues. Will there or won't there be a public health plan? At the end of the day, Senator Reid has to be able to produce a final vote on this bill that's going to require 60 votes uh, through some combination of either Republicans or Democrats standing together at the very end to cut off any filibuster of the bill. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in the House. Sure. The House, they're doing the same thing over there. Um, there, they've been uh, in, un, behind closed doors as well. Uh, but what we've been hearing, what we just heard, uh, uh, learned yesterday, that Congressman Mike Ross, who uh, introduced a, a very important amendment uh, on behalf of, uh, of, of the ACA and others uh, to uh, make sure that there's not discrimination on the, on the state level and that state, state regulations cannot be preempted uh, on, on plans that will be covered under state law. Now, we just learned late last night that Congressman Ross is going to send a letter to Speaker Pelosi uh, urging her uh, to um, uh, keep this provision in the bill. Let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, all along, one of our key issues has been trying to prevent health plan discrimination against providers, chiropractors in particular. And we're trying to do that with respect to participation, reimbursement, covered services. And what we have is a letter from Representative Ross, a major leader of the Blue Dog Democrats in the House, to Speaker Pelosi, urging Speaker Pelosi to include in the final version of the House bill uh, 
a workable non-discrimination provision that deals with maintaining the applicability of state laws. We have a lot of favorable state laws. We don't want to lose them. So I would urge our viewers, go up on our website, certainly no later than Thursday of this week, and there will be instructions, I believe, up on the website as to what you can do in terms of grassroots in urging Democrat members of the House to sign on to Representative Ross's letter. The more support we can get for that letter, the greater likelihood that we might have a non-discrimination provision that retains the applicability of state law in that House bill when it's finalized. Yeah, you're right, Rick. We'll have more information uh, on our website later. We just learned about this late last night, this letter. Uh, again, uh, we urge you to contact your member of Congress in the House. Uh, urge them to sign on to the Ross letter to Speaker Pelosi on, on non-discrimination. That would be very huge. Uh, also, make sure to, to sign on to our website and see all the latest information that's up there on our health care reform page. Again, that's www.acatoday.org slash HCR, stands for health care reform. And we can never uh, end one of these episodes without, without mentioning Chiral Voice, which is, again, one of our biggest... Uh, biggest patient advocacy network tools that we have out there. Absolutely, John. And of course, we're even, ad we're even adding to uh, uh, the armaments we have to fight this battle. Exciting news, uh, the ACA has retained uh, the services of the former U.S. House Majority Leader, Democrat member of Congress from Missouri, Dick Gephardt. He was a strong chiropractic champion when he was Majority Leader in the House. Dick Gephardt and his firm are now working with us. We help recommend that. Uh, a big salute to ACA's board and House of Delegates for stepping out and allocating the funds to help bring that about. But we need more dollars to help uh, finance our very aggressive and multifaceted uh, lobbying and grassroots efforts to help retain Gephardt, to help keep that going, to help our grassroots Cairo voice going. We need some, we need some money, uh, quite frankly. Uh, ACA doesn't have everything we need in that budget, and it will help us if we can raise some funds. The ACA leadership is putting together a program called Cairo Champ. You want to tell the viewers a little bit about sure. it? We don't have a lot of time, I know. Sure. CHAMP stands for Chiropractic Health Advocacy and Mobilization Project. If you go to www.chirochamp.org, all the information is up there. You'll even able to uh, donate, contribute to the cause online. We have all that information uh, for you on that. We really urge you to, to go to that site as well. A lot of information, a lot happening. We've given a lot to our viewers. Uh, again, we keep on saying this every week, Rick, but uh, uh, the action is really going to get hot and heavy. I still stand by my Christmas Eve prediction. Uh, it may be a little earlier than that, but I don't really think so. But these next several months are going to be really important. Absolutely, John. And in the very end, it may go what's called the reconciliation process. More on that in our next update. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, John. Good seeing you. Good to see you.